Mark Schwakey. I'm here for Hot Topics with Claire Cronin, Customer and Marketing Director of Virgin Holidays. Hi Claire, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, Customer and Marketing Director, that was a new role for Virgin Holidays and yeah. you came in in 2014. What was that about, the merging of the two, the two disciplines? Um, essentially, my boss at the time, Mark Anderson, who was the Managing Director of Virgin Holidays, really wanted to put the customer at the heart of everything we did. And previously, marketing had been more of a comms function only. And so he wanted to put the two disciplines together and make me accountable for de defining the brand promise and then delivering on the brand promise. So giving me the end-to-end -end control over the whole customer experience and all of the communications we send to our customers. It feels like there's been a significant amount of change at the company since your arrival. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key developments you've, 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 you're most proud of? Um, oh, I should say it's not because of my arrival, so, um, but there was a big strategy in place before I actually joined the company to look at the entire business and see where were the big profit drivers and where were the big opportunities for customers where perhaps their needs weren't being met as well as they could have done um, by all of the operators in the market. And so um, my boss kicked off a piece of work to, to look at the whole marketplace. And off the back of that, we actually did um, a review of the customer journey and said, our ambition as a company is to create a really friction fun experience for customers. So let's have a look at everything that happens to them, every single touch point from the moment they first browse and start looking into a holiday to the point in which they get back. And so off the back of that piece of work, I um, led a cross-functional team that went out to Florida and to Barbados, two of our biggest destinations, and we did a big piece of ethnographic research where we uh, literally went on holiday with some of our customers and saw some of the communications we were sending them and looked at some of our touch points and then started to reimagine them and to see how technology could play a role in helping to better deliver on our brand promise. Your job was to go on holiday with your customers. <laughs> well, that's the way I interpreted my job. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that my boss went along with it. Let me, let me know if there's any vacancies <laughs> at any point. So you mentioned uh, that this kind of almost obsession with building around the customer. Mm -hmm. you, saw, you talked about building a fun and frictionless journey. I, I get the fun thing because of the Virgin mm -hmm. brand. Yep. And the frictionless thing because consumer demands and expectations are now on the increase. Mm. How are you doing that? So, for example, 2015, mm -hmm. um, Virgin stopped distributing holidays through third-party travel agents in a bid to own more of the customer journey. Was there a problem you were experiencing with having your customers, knowing your customers, pleasing mm -hmm. your customers, and then losing visibility? In a nutshell, yes, that's exactly why we stopped uh, distributing through the trade. Because in order for us to build really personalised experiences and be able to tailor exactly to what customers want, we need to be able to hold the data ourselves. And actually, if we're distributing our product through a third party, we don't see it. And so we wanted to be able to really enhance that customer experience and give the same experience and same quality to every single customer. And we can do that now because we only distribute our products through our stores, our website and through our call centre all of which are based in the UK. And we know that's really important to customers because they like to be able to speak to people who have really deep knowledge and who've got a very good sense as to what people like them really want to buy. But then there's still a problem. So for example, if you're a packaged goods company and you can do pull resources by the million mm -hmm. into the right experience, the right advert, the right promotion, the right packaging, the right sex appeal, yeah. but you're gonna lose something in that final, mm -hmm. in that final mile because you, your, uh, your toothpaste is on the shelf of somebody else's supermarket. Yep. Similarly, do you have um, anything that you try and impress upon your partners, the inventory, mm -hmm. the hotels and, yeah. and so on, the resorts? We are virgin, we absolutely need to provide this kind mm -hmm. of experience and deliver it well, can you help? But do you have yep. that kind of relationship where you know that your customers are going to feel virgin holiday customers right through their holidays? Yeah, we've got really close relationships with our hoteliers and you know we've only been in business for 31 years. We developed up obviously from a startup basis and we nurture really close relationships with all of our key partners. And what we've found is that actually over the years, our customers tend to gravitate towards some really popular hotels and they become the firm favourites in our range. So for example, we send more customers to Disneyland than any other operator. Really? And so we're able to create really new, unique experiences with Disney, which wouldn't be available to any other um, shopper in the market. And so we really use those competitive advantages to then further personalise the experience. And so we're developing a number of different um, relationships and unique experiences along the journey um, to really give extra value to customers which we know will delight them.
Disney and Virgin's a bit of a brand, a dream brand tie-up, isn't it? It is, and it's for yeah. exactly that reason that we decided to co-sponsor with Disney the new um, Anton Dex Saturday Night Takeaway. So perfect vehicle for us. Yeah. It's obviously one of the most popular family TV shows in yeah. the UK, and we have a huge demographic of what we call smart families that like to travel on holiday with us. So we felt it was the perfect vehicle to promote um, our range and to enable customers to seize the holiday. So last year we redeveloped our brand platform, seize the holiday. And we thought this was a great example of enabling customers to go and watch the Anton Deck show and then for the final episode to quite literally seize the holiday, get on a plane, go to Orlando uh, and to take part in the final show out in the Magic Kingdom. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah, I so, don't have a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about smart families. Tell me about smart family. What does that mean? So t talk to me about smart family uh, in the context of the changing nature of booking a holiday and everything that that means, yeah. customer experience, uh, rising expectations, seamless everything. Yeah. We, um, you have kids yourself, right? I've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Hi, guys. <laughs> so you know what it's like. When it was just you and your wife going away, you probably did lots of last-minute travel and just hop on a plane on a Friday, get back late on a Sunday, roll you're, into work, a bit hungover on a Monday. You're going to make me cry. Yeah, that, that's the way your life used to be. And now you've got kids, and now it becomes a lot more planned. And so what we realise is that it's very, very difficult for parents to find the time to really plan in detail their holidays. And they have a huge sense of um, fiduciary duty to their children. They want them to have the best possible experiences and to be able to remember them. It becomes far more, I realised as a dad, far more an emotional purchase. Yeah. Because if you're going to do it once, and if you're really lucky twice a year, yeah. you need it to be absolutely spectacular. And like you yeah. said, it needs to be built of memories. Yeah, and what we know is that when customers are researching holidays, it's become a really overwhelming experience. Like the average customer will look at 42 different websites before they buy their holiday. And if you think how busy you are and with your kids, you haven't really got the time to be scrolling through all those different websites yeah. and trying to understand, well, is this hotel right for me? Will the kids club be good? Will I be able to get a babysitter? And so the role that we play within that is really decreasing the anxiety and really decreasing the chance of you getting it wrong. So we're there to help understand what do you and your wife really love to do? Do you really want to be able to have an interconnected room so the children are right next door to you? Do you want them in the hotel room with you? So we find out exactly what kind of trip you want to have, the ages of your children, and what will they be able to remember? And then we will tailor a, a holiday around your expectations. And so um, for us, that means we have gone on a big journey to decrease the amount of communications we send to customers before they go on holiday. So we used to send them 35 different pieces of communication to help make sure they understood when they needed to give their visas in, any inoculations they needed to have, and so much stuff. But for a pe busy parent, it's just so much information to get through. And so we went on a journey last year to dramatically rationalize that down yeah. to just 10 pieces and like a stress-free guide to yeah. Orlando Airport, which if you've never been there before, is quite difficult to navigate. Yeah. So simple piece of communication that really helped to enable parents to pick the most important things to them. And then when they're on holiday, we've actually got a team of about 80 people overseas on-site concierges that if you have any problem on your holiday or you want to book an excursion, you can do it directly through them and they can source the best deals available to you. There's a thought in me that, um, again, I'm thinking back to every holiday I've booked since the kids were born. Mm. And at some point, you want to be on your mobile, and at some point, you want to be on a laptop. Yeah. When you're almost making a decision, you're sitting together. Yeah. And then at some point, you also want to have a conversation with somebody, right? Because yeah. you want to know, is, you know, not so much, have I got a sea view anymore? It's more like, do yeah. you have a cot? Do you have a proper car seat in the car that's going to get us from yeah. the airport? So I want to have a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. How does that link up, that human element? Yeah. So we, because you, because yeah. sorry, when you came in, you said that you were going to turbocharge the digital offering. Yeah. So a progress report on the digital offering, but mm -hmm. also how do you link it and join it up with the human interaction yeah. I need? So we have, um, we know lots of customers still value a face-to-face -face conversation, and for those customers, we've got nine. Um, what we call V rooms in destination shopping malls where they can actually go in, uh, have a drink at the bar, taste the holiday, sit in an upper class seat and see is this something I want to pay the money to upgrade to. 
That's great if you've got the time to be able to go to a shopping centre. But if you're a busy parent or you kind of work in the city, we know that we need to provide something akin to that online. Yeah. And so we've done a couple of things. Firstly, we've actually built a conversational search prototype for the actual mainframe web experience. So enabling customers to talk, um, sort of type in phrases that they would as they would actually say them and to see um, it does that help them to get to the better um, quality holiday choice for them sooner. So instead of going through the classic filters that all ho holiday companies use, where as soon as you go to the website, where do you want to go? How many nights? When do you want to go? So it's very difficult to, to kind of tease out, well, I want to go somewhere hot in June. Yeah, yeah. Give me some advice for that. So we've yeah. done this conversational search prototype. And we're testing that with customers at the moment. And just yesterday, actually, we launched um, a new Alexa-driven app. So one of our developers, Declan Newman, went over to Las Vegas for a conference. And when he was there, they were showcasing the new technology. And he thought, I'm pretty sure I could knock that up and do a basic prototype and see our customers comfortable talking to an app and using voice search in that way. So he developed the app and uh, called it Alex. And you can say to Alex, I want you to find me the best deal in Las Vegas and it will search three million different data points to generate the best result for you. And what we want to see is, not just are people comfortable speaking in that way, but is that the way in which people will be searching for holidays? So we know a lot of people search for their holidays when they probably should be working. And so they might not want to draw attention to the fact they're not doing their day job when they're sat in their office. So we know that voice search isn't really ideal for all different scenarios. But what we do know is that probably for a family that are looking to go away together, it is a great experience to be able to talk to somebody and to get that advice and for multiple people to hear the conversation and contribute. And what we're trying to establish is, can Alex, com um, can he deal with multiple people talking to him or does it have to be a one-on-one -on -one holiday conversation? Sure. And we're using these kind so of innovations to really help inform where we take technology next. So dad might be asking Alex about budget and kids might be asking Alex about ice cream. Exactly right. Yeah. And Alex needs to know which question is most important, yeah. who do I answer first, and then how do I use all the data points to then priority ramp, this is the best place. But on a serious note regarding the Alexa app, um, the coverage was huge yesterday. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just a PR splash story in order to uh, convince and reassure that Virgin Holidays is, is ahead of the pack. This is you yeah. as a company mm -hmm. testing what the future looks like. So we yeah. all know uh, the Hot Topics audience is going to be very aware that voice is going to play a massive part mm -hmm. in our future, not very far from now. Yeah. But you're about testing how this works, how can we improve mm -hmm. it, does it work? Yeah. And do people want to use it yet? Yeah, critically, we can't, we have very lean budgets and we develop in an agile way. So we'll test small prototypes and see what's the customer appetite before we build massive business cases and pile huge amounts of CapEx investments behind it. So for us, this is a great way to see, is there appetite to use it, particularly amongst our customers? Lots of teenagers are completely comfortable talking to Siri, talking to Alexa, but the people who are buying long haul holidays aren't teenagers. No. So the, our biggest audiences are what we call smart families and then couples over 50 and we want to know are those audiences comfortable using search in this way or would they prefer classic um, type in search yeah. and are they comfortable perhaps with a conversational search engine so all the time we're trying to see where can technology make a difference for our customers where do they value it not just do innovation and technological technological development just for the sake of it right and, and what will happen to that data is that your remit to report back to the company is this is this your experiment from now from here on in when the um, data starts coming back in yeah is this you to make a recommendation it's we work as big, a big part of a cross-functional team so effectively whenever we do any kind of new innovation we actually have a, a dedicated customer insights team that will analyze all of the business that's been done through any new app or any new piece of functionality and work out can we afford to scale that and if we do scale it how many more sales will it generate just for our audience's sake it's it's worth uh, pointing out that this interview is taking place about half ten in the morning and yeah. yet we're sitting here with an enormous bottle of Virgin Holiday Spirit, a new rum created by data and by AI, I understand. Yeah, it does look like I've got a drinking problem. When you, when you bring a bottle this big in the morning, it, it does look like a problem. But no, it's, um, this was something we actually launched in January. So um, we, did, um, we did a piece of research last year and we were asking customers about the whole holiday buying experience. And they said the thing that they find most frustrating is that when you first buy a holiday, it takes ages before you actually go on it. So on average, people spend seven months 
um, between the point of booking and the point of departing. And if you're a family, it's 18 months. And they said, we just want to get the sense of what is it that I'm buying? You know, a holiday is intangible up until the point where you consume it. And so we started to play around this and say, well, if you could taste a holiday, what would it taste like? And so we did a piece of work using IBM Watson where we analysed 15 million social posts and then used that to understand the emotions and then used cognitive behavioural mapping to map it to flavours. So uh, the flavour of coconut maps to relaxation. The flavour of um, cinnamon maps to curiosity. And then we used Ian Burrell, who's a rum um, ambassador, to blend those different flavours. And then he created the Virgin Holiday Spirit. So this is a, a Bayesian rum. We only made 800 bottles. This is bottle number 777, because I wanted the luckiest bottle in the pack. Um, and we sold them for £59 at our destination V-Room stores on the high street. And how are they doing? They're sold out. So they sold out within weeks and actually they're exchanging hands on the internet for hundreds of pounds. And um, the other week we had somebody go up from Milton Keynes and fly all the way to Glasgow to pick up the last bottle. So um, it's been so popular and we developed a, um, a cocktail off the back of it called the Red and Stormy. So I'll take on the, dead, uh, the, um, the Dark and Stormy. And we've had so many requests to bring it back. We are considering, do we actually run it as a product which anyone can come into the Virgin Holiday shops and buy and actually start stocking it on the planes? So people who are smart families, your customers looking for holidays, uh, don't see this as a, as a, as a, a distraction or a frivolity. This is, this is part of a Virgin experience. When you're yeah. a Virgin Holidays customer, yeah. you try and really yeah, absolutely. We, we want to give it that little va va voom that you yeah. would only get with Virgin. So you go into any other tour operator and it's a bit like going into a 1980s banking hall. They've got ranks of desks, it's very formal, and then a massive rack of brochureware. If you come into one of our V-Room stores, the first thing you, you see is a taste bar where we've got Hershey bars on the counter for the kids because you know how exciting it is when you see American chocolate for the first time. And we're like, you know, tuck in. You're going to have loads of this when yeah. you go away. Yeah. There's drinks behind the bar for the parents. Uh, we stock the Virgin wines. And we're actually in discussions at the moment with Virgin because they have a vineyard out in San Francisco. And so one of the things we're looking at is can we... Uh, take you to the vineyard where, you have, where you're buying the Virgin wines. So fly on the Virgin Atlantic plane, go and stay at the new Virgin Hotel that's opening up in San Francisco and take a bespoke tour to our vineyard. And then you can order as many cases you like of your favorites and send it back home to the UK. So it's those kinds of things where we fully connect up the customer journey that people expect from Virgin. Right. And we want to make it fun. Like booking a holiday is the most fun Thing that you will do this year but we recognize it's also the biggest amount of disposable income you'll spend yeah. second only to buying a car yeah. so it's a really considered purchase we want to make it feel fun and try and reduce that anxiety and convince people that, that they put their money with the the right provider who will treat it really seriously so let's talk a little bit about experience and technology because some mm -hmm. of these great stories you're telling are they're, they're, they're instinctive and intuitive and and they're human stories there's mm -hmm. there's rum and there's joined up there's thought behind what's going to be available at the store when you yeah. go and book your holiday, okay? So these are great craft marketing mm -hmm. tactics. But as you well know, the, the way we, um, people's future expectations of technology and experience now mm -hmm. are based on the last great experience they had. Yeah. That's a challenge for any industry, let alone one where you play a significant part, but not all, mm. in the biggest, yeah. uh, one of the biggest disposable income spends we'll do this, this mm. year, right? So. What are some of the tangible examples mm -hmm. of uh, how evolving customer expectations are driving change in the industry? And then maybe we can talk about some of the ways in which you're yeah. trying to tackle them. So we know that when customers are in the UK and then they travel overseas, that their expectations stay the same. It doesn't matter if they're traveling to a developing country. And I do this myself. You know, I, I sit on my Uber app, and as soon as I go into another country, I don't bother going to the, to the airport rank now and looking for a cab. I just go straight onto Uber. And we looked at that and said, actually, how do we take that into the experience we have with our overseas on-site reps? So we used to um, do the very terribly quaint thing of putting a leaflet under customers' doors, little letters saying, come and meet me in reception, and I can talk to you about all the excursions. We know that customers aren't interested in going sitting in some reception. They want to be by the pool, having a pina colada, playing with their kids. And so we said, actually, how can we take the concept of what Uber's done and look at creating a, what we call a rep in your pocket? So that if you wanted to have a look at different excursions available, you could just put in, here's my location, and a whole suite of different experiences will come up. 
and will get ranked by the customer's ratings of them. So you can see, oh, Virgin Holidays love doing this thing. Okay, maybe I'd like to do that too. And then buy it there and then on your phone. Now that is, takes a huge amount of technology investment and we're in the very early stages of looking at that right now and partnering with Google who've done quite a lot of work in this area in terms of being able to map how long it will take for, for you to get to these different excursions, should you go by car, by train, by boat. Um, and so that's at a very embryonic stage, but we know customers love and value that. And we know that because Disney have poured a huge amount of investment into the Disney app. And so it's commonly said now that the app economy is dead. People only have three or four apps at best that they use repeatedly on their phone. Absolutely true. We're a long haul holiday provider. You're not going to keep us on your phone when you're not using us. But Disney have actually proven that when you go for a bucket list experience holiday, you'll download an app and all of their customers use it. And so we're looking to see, should we do something similar for the destinations where we're not traveling with Disney? And so when, when, I'm, when I'm wandering around a, a hotel resort with this and yeah. I'm an on-demand, uh, on-the-go customer of yours looking for um, the same level of experience and joined up platform mm -hmm. living that I experienced back here, yeah. are you able to use that data uh, are you able to find and identify and use an, an action, that data, in terms of measuring loyalty and engagement? Yeah. How do you, what's, the, what's the approach to data and insight? Not yet, but that is absolutely the future and where we're going. So one of the things that we're looking at um, to really reward customer loyalty is building a joint loyalty program with Virgin Atlantic. So enabling you to earn points for the flight you've taken and then the hotel you've experienced on the ground or any excursions and enabling you to amass points so that you can earn and burn that on any part of the customer journey you choose. So um, that's in um, design right now. Uh, and once we have that and we're able to see your preferences for what you like to do, your favorite ho hotels, your favorite excursions, what we want to get to is that we can notify you, oh, this hotel has just opened up a new restaurant. We think you'd love this hotel. Why not take your family to go and stay there next time? Or we know that your children love the water parks. Um, Atlantis have just opened a new ride at their water park and notify you about things and prompt you based on, we, on us knowing when you typically like to go on holiday because most people have almost what I call an internal calendar. So personally, I love to go away every January because I'm just miserable, it's cold and, uh, and I really want to get away. And then I like to go away in October because we've had the nice summer and it started to get colder again and I kind of want to gear up for the winter. So those are the two points in the year when I definitely want to go away. And at some point in the middle, I'll probably go away on a, uh, on a weekend break. And all customers are like that. They tend to gravitate towards certain months of the year. They have and a timetable. Exactly. And we want to be able to say, actually, there's a sale going on at this point. Why not take advantage of this? Because we, we want to try and make sure that we give customers the best possible value. And we're always alerting them to the best deals and the best experiences. And talking about the future, because you've, all, you, you've already sp spoken a little bit about how, um, how Virgin Holidays is using virtual reality and artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, but using it with a purpose as opposed to just for the sake of it, to make yeah. sure we can test and learn and to make sure mm -hmm. that there's some value there. But there has been a huge revolution uh, just in itself with the emergence of Airbnb in your industry. Yes, So absolutely. the sharing economy and Airbnb mm -hmm. has literally set a new benchmark Mm -hmm. for revolution in this huge industry yep. that we all love. What do you see from your vantage point as the next, or the shape or feel of the next big disruption, the next big uh, evolution in your industry? And, and how, how easy is it for you to keep being the challenger brand and yeah. disrupting when something's come in and turned everyone upside down? Well, if I knew what the next innovation would be, I would definitely be a multi, multi-millionaire and retired by now. But I think, I can definitely say, I think chatbots and how we use those overseas to help customers get the best in class servicing is, is likely to be the next big trend. And we're starting to look at that right now. So real time conversational commerce, real time conversational interaction, help, support. Yeah, absolutely, because all businesses are trying to reduce their overheads and make them as lean as possible so they can give as much value back to customers as we can and try and keep the prices down. And the more personnel you have on the ground in lots of different countries, obviously the higher that cost is. And so the more we can use chatbots to create that slick service experience and get the same quality everywhere, the better. But we welcome competition. We actually loved it when Airbnb broke into the field because it really encourages us to up our game. So we know that um, increasingly customers, once they first stayed on the parks in Disneyland, 
they'll then want to go and have a villa experience because they like to go out. And often you get multi-generational family groups going out now, so the grandparents with the kids and what have you, and they'll go and pick a villa. So Airbnb have absolutely cleaned up in response to this trend. And we looked at that and said, we know that our customers are, are actually uncomfortable staying sometimes in somebody else's home. They worry about cleanliness. Will the consistency of the homes be good enough? So we built our own villa community and we created this own villa complex, which you can only stay in if you're a Virgin customer, because we know that Virgin customers are very sociable. They like to um, hang out and spend time with other Virgin customers. And particularly if you've got families, you know, your children make friends with one another. Yeah. They want to hang out together. And so they have movie nights internal to, um, to the complex. Complex. They've got an ice cream van that goes round that serves the kids all day long. So as a dad, you don't have to worry about how expensive that is. Uh, and that's something that our customers said they really valued. And we've seen it absolutely skyrocket in terms of the demand into those villas. So Claire, thank you for joining us. Final question. Yes. 2017, mm -hmm. um, Managing Director Mark Anderson has literally just skipped over to a new role at Virgin Atlantic. Yeah. Very exciting. Joe Thompson is coming mm -hmm. the other way to replace him. Yeah but not till July. Yes. So is there a sense that Joe is going to uh, give a level uh, of continuation to a plan that's already in action? Mm -hmm. Or is 2017 going to be um, seen as a year of exciting development or transition? How's it looking? So Craig Krieger is the CEO of Virgin Atlantic Group. And as a result of that, both Virgin Holidays and Virgin Atlantic sit under the same family umbrella. Mm. So Joe Thompson is an SVP in the business, as is Mark, and they co-created the strategy for Virgin Holidays right. and Virgin Atlantic. So it'll be very much a continuation. And we really see our business in terms of two dimensions. So one is really a price play, working really closely with the airline to make sure that we strip out any unnecessary costs and can give the best value packages to our customers when they choose to fly to the destinations that Virgin Atlantic serve. And then on the other hand, an experience-led play. So we're really breaking into the tailor-made holiday market. We're famous for selling fly and flop holidays to the US and the Caribbean and for Disney. But we know that customers are increasingly getting really adventurous and they want to be able to perhaps go on a cooking exploration or a fine dining experience all across America. So we're looking to work with customers to understand what are their passion points and then to create those with a tailor-made trip. And Joe is coming in to follow on and keep executing on that strategy. Thank you for your time. Uh, this has been Mark Schwakey and Claire Cronin, Customer and Marketing Director for Virgin Holidays.